Welcome, and this is the Parrot King. Today I'll be showing tips and tricks through Fishing Planet on what to do and what not to do scenarios. All right, so let's jump into this right now. All right, so on the list today of what to do, we have equipment matching for bait tackle and fish nets, of course. Bait coin, goal list of equipment wanted focus on one type of fishing equipment and then on the list of what not to do today we got leaving without body equipment buying too much equipment leaving starting location license and travel days and bait coin once again all right so to start off we're going to go into the what to do and that's going to be equipment matching and just a quick overview on equipment matching nothing too big I use a Farcaster 8.6 and a Helios 2000S. Now the Farcaster, as you can see over here, its line weight is from 6.5 to 17.5 pounds with a lure weight of half ounce to 1.5 ounce lure weight. All right. Along with my Helios being at 8.7 pounds and my line's at 17 pounds. Now, with this setup, that's going to give me optimal performance, and that's what you guys want to do. You want to look at, does everything meet within a range that meets the rod? So, for instance, you want your line to meet the rod, you want your line to meet the reel. And your reel can be over the rod strength, the, well, the, the rod um, max weight for the fish but you never want it too high always about a pound higher if you can or right on the dot and then everything else right on the dot so always look at those options options and make sure you're meeting all that criteria this these three things have to meet in a like trifecta in a sense of a triangle all right and then I wanted to touch base on this a little bit. So, you know, casting weight, very important. Line weight, very important. As you can see, my line weight here is the same as my drag weight for my reel. I am using 15 pound line though. Kind of a no-no, but with feeder rods, you can get away with it. Especially since you'll be using a leader that's just as heavy as your line, if not right around the same area. You normally want this to be a pound over or a little bit under. And a little bit under meaning I'm only 0.7 of a pound under my line weight, so it's perfect. Then I'm using a one and three fourths ounce sinker. That's gonna give you good casting distance. It's also gonna allow you to sink to the bottom faster in deep spots and really hold your bait down. With this setup, you can use stuff like large cup bait, small cut bait, medium cut bait with no worries of snapping your line. All right. So that's kind of what I wanted to touch base on when it comes to equipment matching, but to match your lures, really what's important is, you know, this is a three fourth ounce with a little grub on it, a three inch grub. With that being said, one and a half ounces is my max lure weight so this is perfect three fourths now it's really funny and i wanted to show you guys this because when i add because i have a one and a half ounce jig head this tackle is too heavy for the rod risk of damage it's very funny because only with jig heads does this happen with this rod is because the extra weight which they don't disclose how much weight this is but it's because of this guy right here. But if I were to go in here and add this medium spoon, it's optimal, it's perfect. So just remember that when you're fishing with jig heads that if you go to the max weight, it's gonna tell you that it's too heavy every time. So try and be under weight on your jig head so you can add that extra weight with the grub, all right? And then again, if you want to use light tackle, it's really smart to get yourself a spinning rod. And how this spinning rod is set up is it's a 10 weight, 10 weight with 10 pounds. 
it is set up 100% perfect to the T of the aspect and ratio that this rod is supposed to be used. I get my maximum casting distance. I get to use all the lures that it's possible with this. It's That's what you're looking for, guys. You really just want to try and match everything perfectly. Not every rod and reel option is going to have that, though. There's going to be some one-offs sometimes. All right? So... Going into the next one, Bitcoin. What to spend your Bitcoin on? Well, here's what I say to spend your Bitcoin on. Tools and equipment. Any of these. You know, really important because you're going to have it for a while. It's going to allow you to have it for a while. All right. Lures. Buy lures with it. Super important. Because like barbless lures... You can only use Bitcoin to buy them. So just keep that in mind that if you want to complete a mission, possibly, you're going to need a barbless lure, maybe. It costs Bitcoin. Not a single lure, barbless lure, costs money. Next one, you could spend it on bait. I, you know, I recommend it if you really need that bait or something. But I don't, I would not say your first resort, spend it on bait. Because it's just not plausibly the best idea. Alright. Oops. And bait isn't that expensive. And there's no Bitcoin option in here. So it's all money. But for instance like insect and worms. For Bitcoin for some mayflies. You know you get 25 mayflies for 4 Bitcoin. Just make sure if you spend it on your bait, you have plenty of bait coin to do something else as well. We're going to jump into the what not to do with bait coin though. And I recommend not doing this is the exchange of bait coin for money. Only do this if you need to get yourself out of a negative. Really, only do that. But other than that, hold on to your bait coin like it's precious gold because it is. All right. Now the next thing I want to touch base on, we can go back to this little map here is a goal list of equipment wanted. So I always say to get your phone out or get your sticky notes out and list all the equipment you want. And then with that equipment, you're going to put the dollar amount next to it. And then you're going to write out a total at the bottom after you add it all up. And that's how much money you need to earn on your next fishing trip, plus the amount of money for your next advance license and your next fishing day. Uh, and basically place. Let's say you're fishing at Emerald and you want to move up and go to Nyron. Well, now you need to make sure you have $3,300 plus $1,100 for that license along with the equipment needed and that you want to purchase. So a goal list is a great way to make sure you stay on top and you stay within your boundaries. And then on the list, on the last on the list of what to do, I always say Pick one of these rods to focus on, except for telescopic. Get away from those guys. Really, they're, I mean, that's my opinion. Maybe someone else has a different opinion, but telescopic rods suck. And I say moving to match rods as soon as you can. Then choose casting or spinning, and then move into feeder rods. And just make sure you get in that rod case eventually. So you can have multiple rods with you at one location. As you get into different locations, that is a very important piece of equipment to have. One thing I will also like to touch on for this is keep nets. Make sure you get the right keep net, keep net for yourself. I'm fishing here. Really? This is my next one I want. It's $42,770. So I, I got a ways to go. I'm at $20,440. But it doesn't hurt me too much because I have a 220 pound net. And I can, you know, it allows me to catch big fish. And the only time the net is really important, besides the more you can keep, the more money you make. But the single fish weight of 44 pounds, now I can keep fish that are 44 pounds and up, which is super important. Well, 44 pounds and down. Not up, but down. But look, if you have 420 Bitcoin, boom. You got a keep net that will last you a long, long, long time. 
So that's all I wanted to go in with equipment on the what to do's. Just make sure you focus on getting the equipment that is needed for your fishing trip. All right. Now on what not to do's. Leaving without bought equipment. So sometimes when you buy equipment, it ends up in this little guy right here, home storage. And then you go, goodbye, I'm going to Niren. And you just remembered you forgot all your bass jigs because they got put in your home storage. Before you go anywhere, always make sure you have all your bait and tackle for the trip in your backpack at all times. I can't stress that enough because I do it. I've done it. And I always have to remind myself, like, make sure, you know, I got to go make sure it's not in my home storage. Make sure it's in my backpack. And then, again, buying too much equipment. And what I mean by buying too much equipment is you bought so much equipment that you want for all of these places, maybe, or your next place, when you only need to buy a couple pieces, and now you left yourself with with less money and you can't go to Niren. You just can't go now because you bought too much equipment. So really focus, keep an eye out for that. Always watch your dollar amount, add your money up, goal list, and make sure you have enough to go to your next location so you can make that money back that you just spent. Super important part though is leaving your starting location too soon. Lone Star. Don't leave here until level 9. That's what I, I'm going to say is level 9, level 10, or $15,000 in the bank. You got $15,000 in the bank? Get. Go ahead. But level 9, level 10 is what I say is the appropriate level to go to Rocky Lake or Emerald Lake or Mudwater River. Because all three of those are going to be open to you as soon as you hit, like, what? Level 8. Boom. So as soon as you hit level 8, you have this. So you stay here to level 9, get a little extra money, get the equipment needed. You should be golden. Especially if you follow those other things I said in this video previously. Alright. Licensing and travel days. So with licensing, always buy your advanced license. Reason being why is because if you can't catch your trophies and your uniques, you're really just hurting yourself and the maximum amount of money that you could possibly make on that trip. All right. You're not going to get trophies all the time. You're definitely not going to get uniques all the time. But when you do, you want to keep them because they're buco bucks, guys. Buco bucks. And then travel days. What not to do in this scenario is that, you know, it only costs, you know, what was that? $500 a day to go. So if you got extra money, go for at least three days. Never just go for one day unless you're truly only going to be there for a day. Because if if you decide to extend, you got to pay that $500. You might as well just pay it up front and maximize your profit for three days. Boom. Maximum profit right then and there. So those are the things I recommend to do, guys. And when you, especially when you're first getting started, always maximize your profits the fullest you can. Also, if you're going to sit here and just fish for three days, just do this. Go to 30 days. Reason being why, because if you stay there for the full 30 and never leave and stay for the full 30 days, you'll get an achievement. You'll get some bait coin. So remember that. And every one of these spots has that achievement to stay and fish for 30 days. All right. Well, with all that being said, what I want to do now is thank you all for tuning in today. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and the like button as well. Also, for additional content and gameplay, come follow me on Twitch. My Twitch name is Parrot King. You can also follow the link in my bio. If I forgot anything, please let me know. Or if you have any questions because you're just starting out, go ahead and send me a message on my YouTube. I'll respond back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you want, you can send me a friend request on Steam at Parrot1King. And if you have any other questions and you want to ask me while I'm live, come and check me out on Twitch. Come and hit that follow button. Always look forward to 
talking to my viewers. All right, guys? So thank you for tuning in, and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.